kidding, no. Oh, God, do you look good? Hazard, wind gusts 34 knots or greater in water spouts possible. Boaters and small craft could be thrown overboard. Move to safe harbor until the hazardous weather passes. We got another wall of water coming. We just wanted to tell you about our sail plans. So we didn't actually sail 200 nautical miles out into the Atlantic simply to wash ourselves in the misty deluge of what is actually millions of water molecules coalescing at above 10,000 feet until they become saturated and plummet to earth with the telltale rush of cold air called the gust front, noticeable to sailors preceding a large downpour. Often this is referred to as rain. We were actually on day three or something and had 200 nautical miles to go up the Gulf Stream and around Hatteras on our way to Annapolis. The sky is blue, there's squalls around. And rainbows. Everything's very beautiful at the moment. What's for dinner tonight, Ellie? Sweet potato burritos. I love how you say that. Sweet potato burritos. <laughs> Sound very British, yeah. Lenny, come look at this rainbow. Come here. Yeah, you can bring the broom. Oh yeah, wow. Perfect rainbow. Can you see the big rainbow? Look. That rainbow is amazing. Showering, Alex. Oh, we're going with the old bucket bath technique. Nice. We just have to not lose the bucket. <laughs> it's actually pretty warm. We probably would have had a bucket shower too had this squall not blown over us. Some of my favourite moments at sea have been the rainwater showers we've had miles from land. Yeah, whatever. It's a shower, I'm not fucking around. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's been four walls of water come. It's so fun, like each one. There it is, look! Yeah, come on the other side, follow me. This is awesome! Yeah. <laughs> This is really good too because we've been out on the ocean for a few days now and the rig needed a rinse, we need to get the salt water off it. I can't recall the last time that I felt this alive. No, thanks for being our audience and making your food dump like this. Thank you. We're always super conservative with water. But we actually ran the water maker today, so realistically, we all could have had normal freshwater showers, but we thought we'd make it fun. Ellie is gonna have a freshwater shower though. Just a normal, good old shower. Oh. Two minute shower though. 400 litres of water could last, including showers, five adults, 12 days. So that's drinking water, cooking, and very small showers. Now for those of you that might be new, those two little kids running around, that's mine and Riley's kids, and Alex and Ellie are crewing on board for us. Ellie's actually gonna sleep with Lenny, who's our eldest kid, who's three now. So just to be safe, he's uh, having a sleepover with Ellie, which he's loving. Thanks, Ellie. You're welcome. Love you, Lenny. Good night, Good night. Good night. kiss. He usually sleeps with Riley out here in the saloon, but when we're underway, it just makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable in case he wakes up in the night and is trying to find someone who might be on watch outside. And Alex and Riley are gonna take night shift tonight. I'll be up on the early morning shift just before the sunrise with baby Darwin. So him and I are gonna to sleep together. We did pretty well last night. He only woke up three times. And you helped me sail this morning, didn't you? This is the flattest, calmest water. I'm in the Gulf Stream. So it had never occurred to me before, and I've never read that current, if it's going with you, with the wind and with you, 
smooths out the ocean. And, and I don't mean you experience less waves. I mean, the ocean is just flatter. Love to hear from people about that. In the meantime, we've got a three knot current behind us, which means that we're able to go further downwind than we normally would, and the apparent wind is coming around, and the main sail isn't blanketing the head sail. Normally, if you go directly downwind, one, the wind's from behind you, one sail blocks the other, but because we're moving fast, we're dragging the wind around and it's fully on both sails. So we're gonna have to jibe, but we don't wanna to jibe too early because then we'll have to jibe back and then jibe again. We don't wanna to jibe too late because we could end up getting drifting way past our protected corner because also the wind is gonna blow, it's gonna get stronger as the day goes on. It feels like it's blowing 10, like the ocean is just incredibly it feels calm. Like we're going five knots max. Yeah. Like, I just, it's just so smooth. It's nuts. Alex mentioned if the ocean is moving like this and the wind is moving like this, that there's less friction that's causing the waves to occur. So it's actually lower. So that's all of the things that we've been potting and scheming. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Dude, don't bring that inside. <laughs> you want to let him go? Are you going to eat it? I don't know. You want to? I'm not eating it. You're not going to try it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, I'll let him go. No, no. I want to see you eat it. Alright, I'll bring it in. See how smooth just collects all the scales? Done this before. Once or twice. This is awesome. We're doing... 12 knots with the wind at 155 degrees. We've got big sails and a lot of sails up. The code D up and we're going very fast downwind. So we're running away from the true wind, which is gusting to 22, even a little bit more, let's say 23, with one reef in the main, but everything up. There's a probably a planet or something out here that's it's so bright. I thought it was the a light on a mast. There's something really weird and eerie about tonight. I've been working towards making this trip as safe as possible, rounding Hatteras, and there's lightning in front of us and lightning behind us, and I'm, I've had a bit of coffee, and I'm sitting out there going like... Guys, you can now get this extremely accurate representation of Riley on Nightwatch in our store. Pick up the Nightwatch coffee design via the link in the description below. Just mad dog on watch, just like not, not dropping the ball under any circumstances. We've just done our last jibe for the trip. That was the one I was a little concerned about, but we nailed it, we did it really smoothly. Once we put the code D away, everything's a lot more calm now but we're going way slower. So we're thinking about what the right thing to do is. No. Oh. I was at the helm outside and I heard a dunk and I was looking around for the stinky fish and it had somehow flicked its way inside. There's more of it. Elena is going to be spewing. Flying fish stinks so bad. We have a container ship coming up ahead of us and where I've gone close enough to land that I can, I got some cell service, so we've got another lot of weather. We've got 164 miles to go, so we've still got a long way to go, but certainly the hard part's been done. We've rounded the Hatteras. You want a speaker? Morning. I think I jinxed myself. Last night was not a very good night for Darwin and I. I just couldn't sleep for some reason. Ah, oh, because we really picked up speed, that's why. Yeah, we just started flying and then I looked out my window and I saw a squall and I was like, I hope they've seen the squall. And of course they had. Yeah, we, we were just going really fast. So it's a bit bouncy in our cabin. 
so it's actually too buff for Darwin to be walking around by himself. He just falls over, hits his head on everything. It's just too rocky. Today is going to consist of just carrying him around. We plonk him on the table, on the nav station, on the sink over there. He likes the sink. He loves GoPros. Hi, everybody. Gentle. We could put him in the baby carrier, but he he thinks he's too old for it now and he wants to get out. Thank you. Thank you. What's your brother doing? And he needs to stay open the top. He needs fresh air. Are you giving him a cuddle? <laughs> you and I. How you going, Schmook? Tell me everything about the sales and what we just did. So you and I just shook out a reef this morning and the wind is coming from here. Alex and I worked really, really hard last night to put the boat close to land so that Today would be a comfortable sail with 18 knots blowing from here. So wind coming from land, there's not enough chance for waves to form, so we're very comfortable. Last night was nuts. And we exited the Gulf Stream and we rounded Hatteras, which is not like, that's a that's no mean feat. Yeah, that's like, a that's big deal. really, really good. Nice job. Last night, Ellie and I, have, I, don't, I think we had as much sleep as the boys. We were speeding along so quick. There were big waves, we heard rain, we heard these guys fussing about a flying fish. Called a flying fish? Yeah, there's one in the fridge, let me show you. Alex loves to eat flying fish. I think we're all going to have to eat one today. Are you going to try some flying fish, Ellie? I'll try it. Yeah. I don't even know what it looks like. I need to have a look at it. <laughs> oh, it's tiny. I'll try it. I'll try anything. <laughs> Great. That's the spirit. Yummy. Where are we going? So where is the boat? It's here. Here. There's our boat. See? Hazard. Wind gusts 34 knots or greater in water spouts possible. Impact. Boaters and small craft could be thrown overboard by suddenly higher winds and waves capsizing their vessel. Move to safe harbor until hazardous weather passes. Both of the kids are still sleeping, so it's free time for the adults. Yeah, 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 yeah. No baby on my hip. No baby on my hip. Darwin does not want to be put down lately. He's got new teeth coming. I know it's because of that, but look at the wind. There's more coming. The yeah. wind is really picking up. We're gonna just come up a scotch here and then flop over. We have arrived, showered, feeling alive again. We even did a workout, Ellie and I. Ellie's just made us black bean burgers for dinner which is one of our favorite dishes and Alex is frying up the fly fried fish the fried fr flying fish he's frying up the flying fish whoa I've never eaten a flying fish before I've seen so many of them on the boat when they jump aboard sadly and die so this is gonna be an experience for me oh and some birds have made a nest on the top of the mast in this short time I've been here Lenny is there any bird poo on the deck already no that's good can you tell the birds to go away? They are pretty noisy. No, they are not going away. Did they go? Yes. Garnishes. Oh, yeah, that's not the word I was looking for. Let's see. We're gonna need to cut here. Oh, that looks like nice meat. Right? Yeah, it does. So, wow, kind of like a sardine or something. Yeah, so you just pull the meat off. There we go. That looks great. Is that one good? Tastes like fish. Okay. Bottoms up. Is the tail the best yeah. bit? Uh, to just lift bones. Mmm. Mmm. I'm a fan. It's not too fishy at all. I thought it was going to be really fishy for some reason. It just reminds me of a sardine. It's definitely not a hogfish, but it's fish. 
so you can eat them, everyone. Careful. Mmm. That's really good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it is, eh? Yeah. You know George Orwell? George Orwell wrote 1984, which you've read. Oh, yeah. And Animal Farm? And Aldous Huxley, he wrote Brave New World. Have you read that one? I think you made me, but I didn't. Okay. What Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell feared we would become a captive culture. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture. In 1984, Huxley added, people are controlled by inflicting pain. In Brave New World, they are controlled by inflicting pleasure. In short, Orwell feared that what we hate will ruin us. Huxley feared that what we love will ruin us. And that's by Neil Postman. And I thought that that was relevant for sailing, Elena. Because when we're on land, especially when we're living in a house, we get Uber Eats and eat high fat diets and drink alcohol and live like dumb Westerners. And when you're out on the ocean, it's the complete opposite. I'm much more concerned with what Aldous Huxley is concerned with, in that with today's society. And I guess if, if all well was living in today's society, I think he would have much more of the opinion that we probably do. Thank you for that beautiful bit of insight. Yeah, look, it was a massive day and I was nearly asleep and Riley was trying to get all philosophical on me. So I'm sure Riley would love to hear what your opinion is on this in the comments below.